my sister. Um, and and to, to kind of follow on what Katie said at church today, if you were there, um, he went by many other names besides dad. Um, he's a grandpa, of course, and a great grandma recently, last few years. Um, uh, there was a, a name uh, we heard, uh, Moose. Uh, goes oh, yeah. Um, uh, of course, Uncle Larry, Uncle Ben, Ben, Larry, you know, to his brothers and sister. Um, and whatever name you knew him by, you guys knew a man. And, I, and I'm going to offer my humble opinion and say he's an extraordinary representation of a man. And, um, you know, I could speak a great deal of time. And I could, we're, we'll, we've done some of it already. We'll probably do a little bit more before the end of the day. And as the years go by, we'll do some more of it. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he did so much in his life. What he liked to call his life's adventures, right? He, he was a, a merchant marine passing coal here on the Great Lakes at one point. Uh, he, uh, he walked on, you know, beams, building bridges and, and high rises here um, as an iron worker, right? I mean, he just did some pretty outrageous things that are worth, you know, telling stories about. And um, I, would, I would suggest that it was his service in the Marine Corps that was his favorite adventure, um, at, at least for that, that time in his life, you know. And all the things that led up to that when he joined the Marine Corps was very important to him. And I could go on and on about it, and I, I don't want to really take, take too much more time. I think I can keep this down to like, you know, maybe 10 minutes or something, no promises. Um, and uh, he, he liked to tell me he loved the Marine Corps because of its structure, you know, and the, the, the discipline. He loved, you know, the fact that they put so much emphasis on, on faithfulness and loyalty. And um, he also liked to, he told me anyways, and you guys might have heard this story, he said, and they paid me to get into fights. <laughs> um, Dad wouldn't mind throwing a hand from time to time. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, there's, there's many of these stories out there. We all get a chance to share them today. Um, but uh, he, he talked about his adventures in the Marine Corps, jumping out of perfectly good airplanes, right? Um, punching out of submarines from 60 feet deep. You, you know, the different it, it, things he got to do. He, he, he shared with me, he said, you know, we thought we were movie stars. <laughs> you know, we got to do all these crazy cool things. And um, <clears throat> again, and, and I'll give you my perspective, right? I think Dad got more out of the Marine Corps because of the people he got to meet and the people he got to serve with. He really enjoyed um, the men with whom he worked and served, that he got to know. Uh, he tried to be a mentor. You know, he tried to be mentored. He was always about the, the men around him. And um, he really had a, 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 an amazing complexity that I'm gonna offer you guys. Um, a, kind of a unique humility. I, I know you might go. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he really did though, and, 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 and you, you probably heard it and maybe didn't necessarily recognize it, but he would talk about the men with whom he served and how humbled he was to be in, and to know them. Uh, he, he actually confided, or I wouldn't say confided, but shared with me that he you know, aspired to be as strong as and as, and as, you know, have that kind of fortitude as those men that he held in such respect. I mean, he said this to me constantly for years, and we spent a lot of time over the last four or five years together. And, you know, he, as he looked up to those guys, and, and, and this is where I think you guys will recognize part of this, he also had a great confidence, right? A great confidence in himself that if he was tasked or needed to do something, he felt like he could do it. And it, it was really his belief in the capacity of and capability of humans, of man. And um, and yeah, he uh, he thought he could do a lot of things better than most people, too. So, <laughs> uh, there, there was, a, like I said, it was kind of a unique com uh, uh, combination of confidence and humility. I, I really I really grew quite fond of it, you know, over the years. Um, and then... Uh, I, I would suggest that those are things that really came out of his makeup, right? Who the core man was um, as he grew up and uh, was inspired by his father and, and you know, the, the, the world around him at that time. And uh, um, it, it really fostered itself as he, as he came out of the Marine Corps and he looked at the Marine Corps as a family and then realized how much he cared about his family. And that's what I want to just spend the last few minutes talking about is 
something you guys are probably aware of, and, and that was, you know, his fascination, fixation, and, and uh, real devotion to family. Um, he spent the last years of his life thriving on being in the company of family and friends, right? Um, insisting on it all the time, traveling to be a part of any occasion, whatever it might be. Um, he'd uh, uh, be arranging family reunions, and uh, um, I think he brought us here together today, too, but uh, 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 looking for every opportunity to entertain guests at his house, and, and I was just talking to somebody who said, no, you've got to come down to Florida. Um, and, uh, and as difficult as it was for him to travel, even in the last few years, it got really tough for him. He still made cross-country trips, several of them, to California over five or six years. Um, back and forth here to Ohio a number of times. And uh, just really dedicated to, to trying to see people. Um, and, uh, um, and in fact, it was just three years ago, right here, right? Uh, I think we were all here. Uh, or, you know, a lot of us were here for a, a reunion of his parents, children, him, his brothers, and his sister, and all of their progeny. Almost every one of us were here. It was just amazing. Um, and he reveled in that. I mean, that was the kind of thing that he was all about. He sat up here, and you guys see some of the pictures here. I mean, it was just, he was in his element. He went on about it for weeks afterwards. I mean, for, for, for a long time. Uh, and he moved to Florida in 2015. Um, it was a real blessing for me because I, I got to spend some tremendous quality time with him. Um, I mean, we argued about his smoking and stuff, but other than that. But, uh, um, <clears throat> You guys know that he was looking for you to come and visit. I, I, I've heard this already a couple of times in the room. And if you said something even in passing, oh, let me see what I can do, he was on the phone going, oh, so when are you coming? I mean, he was, he was going to make sure you made the trip. And uh, it, it, was, it was always that uh, desire that drove him to spend time with his family. It really was um, um, his greatest attribute how much he cared for and felt about his family and friends. Um, I, one of my enduring images is walking into the house, the house um, you know, a couple of times a week, and he'd be on the phone with somebody. He'd be talking. And, and, and even if we were sitting there visiting, he'd take a call and spend time talking to you. He just loved that so much. Um, I, I would say that except for the fulfillment that he got out of being with mom, that you know that was his greatest treasure in life was to be speaking to or spending time with you guys. Um, so in the first few months of this year, even while he was in hospice care at his place at his home down there, Dad would periodically make us believe that we thought well, he's just going to beat us. You know? I mean, it's like how in the heck is it? It's some days with unbounding energy. I, I would tell you a brief little story. Um, we. Uh, this is three weeks before he passed, and um, about bedridden, um, he had been going to a Bob Evans, a local uh, restaurant, on a, day, a weekly basis, Thursday mornings, and he would meet with a group of veterans. Sometimes there was as many as 30 or 40 people there, at least 20 you know, people were these veterans. In fact, there's a couple of pictures up there. There's a couple of guys he was with that with two of them were like uh, over 100 years old. It's pretty amazing. Um, but. Uh, he, uh, he effectively ordered us, take me there. And I was sick to my stomach. I was like, oh, God, you know, uh, you know, picking him up, carrying his wheelchair and all this stuff. He's going to fall and get hurt, and, you know, I'm going to blame myself, and, and he'll probably blame me. And, and um, so um, it, it, it actually was an amazing experience. I, 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 I wish it could have all been something that you guys had seen that day. It was really, really amazing. He was, um, uh, you know, talking to everybody and just having this incredible visit. And, and like I said, the pictures that uh, um, we got out of that were, were just awesome. Um, he thanked us, like, every day until he didn't wake up anymore. Um, so he departed a few days, I'm sorry, a few weeks later, um, actually quite peacefully. Mary and Susan and I were there. Um, and of course, you know, when Somebody like that leaves you. You're you're you're, you're rushed with the, the sadness of, of you know someone that you've uh, cared for dearly, and you know it's we know the pain. 
Um, but in spite of that, you know, we're even though there's a momentary, every once in a while, it's like something you know goes on. You see something or you hear something that's the news. Certainly, Dad was no um, wasn't shy about the news. Um, and I reach out. And it's like, all right, yeah, can't can't give Dad a ring. Um, but he, he did leave us with a lot of joyful memory, right? I, I hope that you guys feel that same way because it, it's, it's, it's really easy to just fall back into feeling sorry for myself and, and my loss. And it's, it's a greater tribute to him and his memory to remember all the cool things that he did for me and with me and about him that I heard about and all of those things. And, um, and, and as we aspire, and, I, and I, I, I will take the liberty here a little bit to speak for, for all of us, as we aspire to live up to his legacy, you know, about family, um, you know, that being honest and forthright, you know, loyal and committed, you know, being ready for a good fight if necessary, um, you know, that's the way we should live our lives, it is on a daily basis, is, you know, with those sort of things. And if you, uh, would let me also share <clears throat> that uh, these last few years, the, the reunions, the, the Marine Corps birthdays, the, the people that came down to Florida, the people they went to see, those visits and the time that you spoke with them on the phone and all of those things, that meant so much to them. Those were big things for them. Um, thank Mary, Susan, and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It really enriched him, made him very, a very, very happy man. And, and I'm gonna finish, this looks gonna be the hardest thing because I practiced my own a whole bunch of times, right? But uh, um, I, I'm gonna read a, a little thing that a guy in Florida asked me to, to, to read to you guys. And I do pretty good with the first part of it, so bear with me. Um, some of you know Irwin. Um, he was a gentleman that uh, lived in the same mobile home park, former Marine, imagine that. Uh, became very fast friends. Um, just a, a really awesome guy. He says, Lawrence Bender, also known as Ben with many things. He was cur a courageous hero. He was intelligent. He was kind and caring in his own way and immensely determined. He was a great company, and he was a, as good and as true a friend as any person could hope for. It was a privilege to know him and to call him my friend. I, I will always treasure our relationship. Ben faced his illness with a courage and determination that left me in awe. He kept his illness in check regularly, I'm um, sorry, largely, with a self-discipline that can only be admired. Um, he was determined to be independent. He was stubborn as a mule. Um, and woe to the person who tried to control him, or, <laughs> or talk down to him, or to make him be what he, they thought he should be. And if you need verification of that, ask his lovely family, brother Pete, son Michael, daughter Susan and Mary Kay, who were con his constant pillars of strength and unselfishly catered to his every need and tried to make his life a little better. But most of all, I will miss my friend. Um, so <clears throat> he was a very important part of my life. I will never forget all the controversial discussions we had, both coming out of the other side, better people and closer friends. You were generous, charming, and annoying at times, but I will miss everything about you. Your heart and friendship are irreplaceable. You will never be forgotten, and your memory will live forever in my thoughts. Uh, so <clears throat> I love you and miss you. Goodbye, Ben. So again, that's from Erwin Beard. And, uh, Listen, thank you guys very much for braving this, uh, you know, crazy time and coming to, to church and coming to this celebration of his life. It means a lot to us, hugely. And um, if, uh, if you can stay a while longer, I would suggest let us revel in his memory and, and feel the quickening inside that it brings. And if I can, General Drowdy, would, if you wanted to, to say a, a moment, he's got a really cool story or two. Thank you.